It's almost universally accepted now that spoilers are bad. We seem to hate them. I've personally seen multiple people in theaters clamping their eyes and their ears shut just to avoid a movie trailer. And the culture of spoiler avoidance seems to have reached new heights. What'd you think of the season finale of Game of Thrones? <gasps> right? Oh, no, 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 no. But I don't want your sorry anecdotal evidence. Because I only believe in science. I wanna know what science says about the question of whether or not spoilers actually hurt our enjoyment of stories. Because what if I told you that studies have shown that spoilers might actually make you enjoy a story more? Think about it. Knowing the outcome of a story doesn't prevent you from enjoying it. We routinely rewatch and reread movies and books, and adaptations and remakes can be enjoyable experiences. So maybe our intuitions about the negative effect of spoilers are incorrect. Goodness knows science has proven society's intuitions wrong in the past. Thank you so much to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. In 2011, Jonathan Levitt and Nicholas Christenfeld from the University of California set out to test the actual impact of a spoiler on the enjoyment of a narrative. They had 819 participants read short stories from a variety of genres, some unspoiled and some spoiled, and then the participants ranked their enjoyment of the story. And surprisingly, they found that people enjoyed the spoiled stories more. So what's going on here? To figure that out, we're gonna have to dive deeper into the science of why we enjoy the things we do. We can call getting a positive experience out of a piece of media, media gratification. Let's look at three theories that attempt to explain why we find media gratifying. According to enjoyment appreciation theory, the gratification we get from media is a combination of the enjoyment we get from the creation and the resolution of suspense and the appreciation we have for how the media moves us emotionally, provokes thought, or from the aesthetic qualities of the work. Under this theory, it seems the spoilers would reduce enjoyment by eliminating suspense, but they might actually increase appreciation by taking our focus away from what's going to happen at the end and allowing us to focus more on the artfulness of the story throughout. I've experienced this effect where I've enjoyed a movie more on a rewatch because I was less focused on how it was going to end and more focused on the individual craft of each scene. The transportation theory of media gratification claims that our enjoyment of the media comes from its ability to engross us and transport us into the world of the story. Spoilers could affect transportation in a few ways. On one hand, researchers who have studied transportation have found that stories are more transporting the more familiar you are with the work. We can hypothesize that a spoiler might help you be more familiar with the story and therefore aid transportation. But on the other hand, researchers also found that stories are more transporting when they're more suspenseful, and again, spoilers would seem to reduce suspense. Finally, we have processing fluency, the theory that media gratification comes from feeling like you understand and comprehend the story. After their 2011 study, Levitt and Christenfeld theorized that spoilers benefited the narrative by increasing processing fluency. Spoilers may allow readers to organize developments, anticipate the implication of events, and resolve ambiguities that occur in the course of reading. But in their 2011 study, they only had participants rank the stories on a simple one to 10 scale. So while they knew that they enjoyed the spoiled stories more, they didn't know what type of increased gratification the participants were getting. So in 2013, they conducted another study to test if the positive effects from the spoilers were coming from processing fluency and aesthetic appreciation. And they found in their experiments that the benefit of the spoilers did come from an increase in processing fluency. The more complex the story was, the more positive effect the spoiler had. So even if the spoiler was hurting the story's ability to generate suspense, the increase in processing fluency was enough to produce a net positive gain in gratification. They did not, however, find the spoilers to have any impact on the participants' appreciation of the aesthetic qualities of the stories. But you're probably like, no, no, no. I still know spoilers are bad. I had this thing spoiled for me one time and it was terrible. And maybe you're just an anti-science skeptic and probably a flat earther too. 
fine. Spoiler alert, these studies might be wrong. Any study needs to be replicated, and in 2015, that's just what Benjamin Johnson and Judith Rosenbaum set out to do. Johnson and Rosenbaum brought in 430 participants and had them read short stories, both spoiled and unspoiled. But this time, they had them rate the stories along multiple dimensions that would measure enjoyment, appreciation, and transportation. And they found basically the opposite of what Levitt and Christianfeld found in their studies. When it came to both enjoyment and transportation, probably like you'd expect intuitively, the unspoiled stories were enjoyed more than the spoiled ones, and spoilers seem to have no effect on appreciation. So what's the takeaway here? We have two studies that seem to indicate that spoilers can increase gratification, and one that seems to indicate that it decreases gratification. Well, a key element is that all three of these studies are measuring gratification in slightly different ways. Even though Johnson and Rosenbaum's study measured gratification in a more complex and nuanced way, they still left out processing fluency, which is what Levitt and Christenfeld found to be the whole reason for the benefit that comes from the spoilers. So it would make sense that they didn't find any positive benefit from the spoilers if they weren't even measuring for processing fluency. And I can see other reasons why these studies might not tell the whole story. All three are measuring the impact of spoilers on short stories, and you can imagine that it might not be that upsetting to have a short story that you're reading for a research project spoiled, but having the major plot twist of a TV show you're 25 episodes into spoiled could be very upsetting. And more recent studies seem to confirm this. A follow-up study from Johnson and Rosenbaum in 2017 used video clips from movies and TV instead of short stories. And they also conducted a survey to measure if Game of Thrones viewers who had seen spoilers enjoyed the show more or less. And in both cases, the spoilers had a negative or statistically insignificant effect on overall enjoyment. They also measured for processing fluency this time, but their findings contradicted Levitt and Christenfeld's findings about processing fluency. And another study by Thomas Daniel and Jeffrey Katz in just August of 2018 found that spoilers had no effect on short stories, but did have a negative effect on full episodes of TV. I think they do a good job of summarizing some of the limitations of these studies in their conclusion. It's possible that, participating in an experiment such as this, participants are not as invested in the narrative as they would be reading or viewing for pleasure. There's a lot more research that can be done and a lot of variables to be considered, such as how major or minor the spoiler is, the context in which the spoiler is delivered, and the amount of time that passes between receiving the spoiler and consuming the media. And it's obviously important to measure what the participants mean by enjoy in as accurate and nuanced a way possible. But the fact that these studies don't immediately confirm our intuitions about spoilers, and when they do find a negative effect, find it to be fairly minimal or non-existent, is very interesting to me. And I think we probably overestimate how important it is to avoid spoilers. The plot twists aren't often the most important parts of a good story, and I've had many things spoiled for me that I went on to totally enjoy. And while a spoiler might eliminate suspense, it could potentially create it as well. Sometimes a plot twist or a character death is used as a surprise or for shock value, but if you have that spoiled for you, the suspense of waiting for that moment, not knowing when it's going to come or how it's going to happen, can be very intense. I've experienced that myself. And I'd like to see studies that test if different people value different types of media gratification. I wouldn't be surprised if some people place more value on processing fluency or some people place more value on transportation versus enjoyment and appreciation. These differences, if they exist, might explain why, for instance, critics can love a movie and general audiences hate it, or why some people actively seek out spoilers and enjoy them and others don't. Let me know in the comments below which type of media gratification you think is most important to you. I'm not advocating intentionally seeking out spoilers. I think avoiding spoilers is totally reasonable, but maybe you don't have to stress about it as much. And if something is spoiled for you, don't write it off. There's a chance you might even enjoy it more. This video is sponsored by Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with over 25,000 courses. It's a brand new year and this is a great time to learn a new skill that could help you further some of your goals. 
People occasionally ask me for advice about making video essays, and my main advice is to just do it. And if you want to do that, you can check out Sam's course for making video essays. Sam at Wendover Production makes some great educational essays, and this course walks you through some of the basics that could help you get a handle on the process. I've taken Skillshare courses about voiceover and audio and cinematography and logo design, and it's all helped me a lot making this channel. Skillshare is giving away a free two month unlimited access trial to the first 500 people who click the link in the description box. And after that, it's only $10 a month. It's a new year, so take that next step to stay learning and become a new you. Thank you to all of you for watching. I wanna thank especially Devin Bray for becoming my first $25 a month Patreon supporter. If you want more information about becoming a patron of my channel, go to patreon.com slash thomasflight. I appreciate all that support and everyone who watches, and I'll see you again next time.